Hey guys, what is up? Today I come to you with a double review of Sir Vamp of episode 5 and episode 6. So, episode 5, we are introduced to another Sir Vamp. Um, it is the Sir Vamp of Pride, which is, uh, I forgot, um, old child, and his name is Hugh. And he's a pretty cool Sir Vamp. And we also are introduced to his Eve by the name of Tetsu. Um, they also gave his age, which is 14. We all thought when we saw him in this episode, we thought he was a college student until he revealed who he was a uh, second year in middle school. Now, after what happened in episode three, I mean episode four, with you know what happened to um, Sakia, and you know Mahiro made a promise to free him um, from Subaki and allow him to live. Um, they haven't really gone back to that and we just, you know, moved on to go on to this new character. Now, there's a festival that is going to happen yearly and they're going to this festival and there they end up meeting one of Subaki's other, um, what do you call it, uh, subclass vampires. I, I forgot his name, but he he has an eye patch over his, uh, left eye and he gives Mahiro, a uh, a case a silver suitcase and which he has to bring to the lost and found and that's how he ends up bumping into Tetsu now Tetsu seems like a very honest and very dependable person despite him being younger than Mahiro and you know him being honest he may say things that um may rub people in the wrong way but he doesn't mean no ill will and we come to find out he's always carrying this coffin with um Hugh inside of there I guess that's Hugh's resting place and we also find out that Hugh is um the fourth servant and of course him being pride he is very prideful and he has the most subclass out of all the um servants are all the siblings um Kuro does not have any servants because he finds it troublesome and he even says like how do you know if the person wants to continue on living so I'm guessing a lot of these servants who make um subclass vampires possibly sometimes they make the people live even though possibly they want to die so that can be also thought that we're thinking of so an explosion happened at the festival and they throw away the bomb that was going to um a explode um eventually catching it in the coffin and then we see where misono's this um discharged from the hospital and they're talking about ways various ways and trying to come up with plans in order to stop subaki because there's a lot of servants that are trying to stop subaki and also they gain gain another ally which is Tetsu and Hugh and they're trying to find a way in order to stop Tsubaki because Tsubaki um in this case is like yeah he is the antagonist and he's like so freaking strong and there's like it's so hard to capture this guy because he's he's in one place and then he's in the other and they find it very wrong but with Hugh having so many um subclass vampires around the place they can get gain the intel that they need in in order to track um Subaki's movements so that was basically the miss what I really got out of episode 5 where we got the introduction of um Tetsu and Hugh as well as there is an organization a neutral organization by the name of C3 and at one point they were containing Subaki using him I guess for his powers or whatever it is and they sent out they captured Mahiro to make him forcibly join their organization and if not they were going to hurt um Kuro by sending out their elite team of vampire hunters and they were talking about how Kuro knew who C3 was and, you know, Kuro has been holding back on Mahiro. He has not been telling about him um, ever since they first met up in episode one. So he has a lot of stuff that he needs to tell Mahiro. But, of course, him being a slot and being a very lazy and laid back person, he may find it troublesome. But Mahiro has to try to draw the truth out to him in order for him to understand this whole world about vampires and how they are involved with the humans. Of course... Mahiro being his simple self declines the offer and rescues Kuro from this um the organization and from the hunters. Now getting into episode six, we are introduced yet to another servant and his Eve, the servant called Lawless. Um this guy, I thought he was like Subaki. This guy is crazy. He's all over the place. Um his Eve is I, I hope I did not butcher his name. Um, his name is Lich, 
and Lawless is um, the servant of Greed. He is the fifth sibling, and you know he he's one minute he's happy, then the next minute he's he's sad. He goes on and off with his emotions, and we come to find out something about this guy, and it really does fit with who he is as in greed. This guy, once he gets bored of something, or better yet, bored of his Eve, he goes and kills them and finds himself another Eve. So he does not stay long with the person who he is with, and now his current target, you can basically say, is Lich, who is a world-renowned um, pianist. Um, he's not so far known in Japan, but it's, it possibly is his first performance in Japan. And who knows, eventually, when time can tell, who knows if Lawless will end up killing him. And the funniest thing about Lich is that he considers himself a uh, angel, and his powers allows him to have on like these dark boots, which could enable him to jump far places and visibly kick the hell out of anything. He even beats up his own um, servant, which Lawless doesn't really care at the end of the day because they he he will end up hitting his own Eve. You would have thought the relationship between a servant and the Eve is like a cohabiting. You know, they're very they're friendly or they're actually able to you know understand each other to a certain extent and you would not expect a servant to actually beat his own Eve and the Eve doing the same exact thing so they have that type of relationship where you know he doesn't respect him and he thinks of him as a um Lich thinks of Lawless as a demon I mean he, he's somewhat like a demon he doesn't care for any life and he do as he pleases and he goes on rampaging on him and Lawless will do the same thing now Lich is having a, a a concert, a private concert, and Mahiro is still trying to gather allies in order to defeat um, Subaki. The interesting about this is that we have, you know, there are the seven siblings. Um, coincidentally, you know, Subaki is the eighth sibling, and all all those siblings we have where Gluttony, Wrath, and Greed are all opposed to not killing Subaki. They actually want him to live. And then, you know, we have Lust, um, Pride, and who else again? Lust, Pride, and uh, Doubt, that was his, um, e Envy, who are all to kill Subaki. But now we have where Kuro, he's in the middle. He cannot choose whether he wants to kill Subaki or if he doesn't and after hearing when Lawless keeps patronizing him and antagonizing him you felt the bloodlust you see the bloodlust in Kuro ready to go kill his own sibling and Kuro is the eldest I don't know if if they really mentioned that really emphasized that in the earlier episodes but in this episode episode 6 they emphasized that Kuro is the oldest out of all the siblings and you know he cannot make the decision whether he wants to kill Subaki or not and he kind of goes on a rampage against Lawless until he's pinned down by Lich and we have been here where Lawless saying that when he was looking at earlier in the episode he, he calls Mahiro normal now I personally think that Mahiro yes he wants to be simple but I think he needs to come out of his comfort zone because him just being simple, he's only going at such a pace that can get very frustrating as you want to see him explore more. And he may, like I said, he has to come out of his comfort zone and try to extend a hand and try to be quite daring in what he's doing. Because in order to get understanding of the servants and to get a better understanding of Kuro, because at the end of the episode, after... Having um, where Lich he used his piano, um, he sums up a piano and he plays a type of song that forces that makes you remember memories from your past. Um, whatever Kuro's past was like, it caused it traumatized him. It traumatized him to the point now he does not have a face. He has like a stagnant, you know, when the satellite goes out and then there's a pitch black, um, pitch black screen and it's just stagnant all over. That's Kuro's face right now. It caused him to be traumatized where he no longer has his own face. And it's up to Mahiro to try to be something different than what he is most known for that's being simple and he has to try to reach out to Kuro because if he doesn't if, if it means by force he has to make Kuro tell him all of these things about him then 
so let it be because Kuro right now at this point we don't know what's going to happen to Kuro and seeing how Lawless was acting so you know he, he was acting big in this episode and then he got frightened by his own little sibling by Subaki at the end of the episode we don't know if he survived or if he's gone we don't know what happened but I want to see what's going to happen in episode 7 on what happened to Lawless if he managed to survive or he's gone right now and concerning servants I don't know if they're are they capable of dying or are they ca they can you know be reverted I don't know if that's the case but possibly they may explain that in episode 7 or just never explain at all so if you saw this week's episode of Servam episode 6 or if you're yet to see episode 5 then I guess you should guys should go check that out um leave a comment in the comment section below on what your thoughts were on both these episodes as well there are the links in the description box so you guys go check that out and I'm Kimmy Chan of Anime Legends Podcast and I will see you guys later bye